Good morning. I know I've been bothering you all morning, but this time we're here to start the program. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, thank you all for being here. This is uh, one of the better crowds that we've seen, and I want to thank uh, all the local folks who got the word out because, uh, of course, you're all here. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, patient advocacy, and it's kind of an easy talk for me because I'm kind of preaching to the choir. You're all advocates. You're here. You're trying to learn. Uh, so it's good. Uh, let me start out, though, uh, by, by asking a question. Uh, how many of you uh, think that uh, today you're going to learn, in, learn things that are going to help you uh, with the care of the patient that you care for, if you're the patient or if, you, if the caregiver. Just raise your hands. You think this is going to be good? Yes. I think it's good to set that expectation. Uh, you know, you, you have to kind of take my word for it at this time, but we do have the doctors in the house who know what's going on and can give you the best information. So, uh, so uh, uh, what we want to do is help patients and caregivers. I'm going to call everybody a caregiver for this room just, just for now, and it'll, it'll be apparent why. I think uh, the patients need to be their own care, uh, their own best advocate uh, as they can uh, because it's important. It's a very complex subject, and even if you are with a doctor who knows a lot about it, I know they appreciate you being involved in your care, asking questions, sharing information about what you're about, and it helps your care, enhance your care. So I think that we're going to be able to, 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 to accomplish that today. Um, and uh, I, I look forward to hearing Dr. Das, who's going to be up in a few minutes. Uh, it'll be the first time I hear him speak. Uh, and he's right from here in town, right? So uh, that's exciting. Now, have, have any of you thought about it, or, or if you want to think about it now, it's just an off-the-cuff question. Who, who are your advocates? Do you, do you know who they are? Have you thought of yourself as an advocate? Or uh, the folks who, who are uh, you know, living with you, your family, are they advocates? And what does that mean to you? you know, and it, it's a subjective question, but we're going to help put some content and some, uh, some clarity behind that. So today, there are a lot of kinds of advocacy, and we're not discounting any of them, but we're going to focus a little bit on personal advocacy. And I think that for many people, you could, you could define it as talking to your doctor. Okay, it's, uh, it's different than it used to be. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that we can get, I can get some, some insight from the physicians, from the docs who are here. But 10 years ago, it wasn't the same. Uh, your input into your care is important. So it's important that you learn about your disease and that you put some input into it. And did I mention that it's life changing? Okay. You, you can affect your care. Don't think that you can't. Okay. So sometimes when I get up and do this, and I've spoken a lot about advocacy, I seem like a, a crusader who's ready to go out and, and, uh, and take on people and, and show, them, show them where they should be. And that's not the case. It's not adversarial. You need to be asking questions. You need to care about the folks who are on your team. And you're going to join a team. You're going to be speaking with your doctors, uh, folks, other medical professionals, maybe insurance companies, things like that. You've got to start from a place that's not adversarial and move the ball forward. So I think that's a, a key point in, in what, uh, what my point is. So I'm going to ask right now uh, if, if, uh, if the net specialist, do you want patient input? When they come to a visit, is that good for you? Great, great. All right, then. I, I guess we're on the right, on the right track. We'll keep going. That's, o that's okay. He said you're on the right track. <laughs> he, I'm going to give him a microphone. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, so what what is an advocate? Well, a, pa a patient advocate, whether you be a professional in a hospital or your own self or whatever you're doing, you help things. You help patients deal with issues. And there's a few different things listed there, but it's pretty general. You're there to help the patient. Uh, advocates also raise public awareness. And why is that important? Well, when you're talking to people, if if the general public thinks that your that your issue is important you're going to have some backing you got you're going to have people saying you know they shouldn't be treated that way so that's important and you can do that in your own uh, personal way so in general I'll say that advocates work to bring about change and it's going to help patients and caregivers or family. Uh, one thing I learned today, going to the, uh, last week, going to the medical center, because uh, uh, my wife uh, had, had uh, surgery, uh, was uh, when I went up to visit her in ICU, they said, uh, you know, they give you a name badge and everything. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm here to see Mary Ann Wayman. Uh, I'm her husband. And they said, are you the, are you the personal medical advocate? And I went, uh, yeah, I guess so. So that's that's a thing now. You are the personal med medical advocate. That's that's how much that uh, that the medical community is embracing advocacy. Oh, wait a second. Yep, going the wrong way, guys. Okay, we'll we'll, just, we'll talk about this again. I'm only kidding. How come I'm stuck? Press up. Ah, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Good deal. All right, so at the bottom there's a fun fact, unverified, but I'm told, or uh, Google tells me, that if you if you have a group of zebras, you ca you can define yourself as a herd, a dazzle, or a zeal, and you're right. So just in case you wanted to know, you're always right. Am I going the wrong way? Okay. So uh, before I go any further, uh, I have another question for you. Uh, if you know who I am, please raise your hands. Well, that's good. It's not bad. Anyway, I'm Bob Wayman, and I'm the director of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Awareness Network. Probably better if I tell you that I'm Mary Ann's husband. Now you know who I am. <laughs> so we're here today to uh, to really uh, give you a lot of insight, help help insight into what's going on in the world of net patients. So, what inspired us to be patient advocates? Well, Mary Ann got sick, 2001. And, you know, it, back then it was kind of like, well, you went to your doctor and they told you what you were going to do. And we, we did some checking around. We were fortunate enough to meet other physicians like Dr. Anthony at the time uh, and some of the folks at his group uh, who really knew the disease. So once we found out some stuff, we said, we should tell other people about it. So that's kind of the start of why we were an advocate. Last week, I mentioned Marianne had uh, had surgery, and she got excellent medical care. So again, my, uh, the point of of uh, advocacy might be to to uh, deal with a critical issue, but it's more about making sure that you get the best care possible. And there were several incidents that we were able to advocate and uh, and uh, even even at this point make her care even better. So uh, this is a relevant real time subject. So her journey b began, uh, she, I mentioned she was uh, uh, diagnosed in 2001. It began seven years before that when she started getting symptoms. So she's been dealing with this for 25 years, and I imagine that a lot of you have a similar uh, story. Um, so, you know, we needed answers. Uh, the last, the, the sixth doctor, might have been on the right track. He, he, uh, he sat us down in the office after the exam and said, do you guys want to consider uh, marriage counseling? 
So he blamed it on me, basically. Uh, but you know, we, we wanted to continue to search for answers, and that's that's part of the quest of adv advocacy. So, net patients needed a hand. We found a way to help in our own in our own way. We can't provide everything, but we do our best to help. So that's why we formed NCAN, which used to be CCAN, Neuro Endocrine Cancer Awareness Network, but First, we were the carcinoid cancer awareness network, but a lot of patients in the uh, in the audience were lung nets and peanuts and all kinds of things. So we changed our name. Now, we we've developed, we've uh, we've grown over the years, and I'm, but I, what I mean by that is we we collaborate with other people. We're not the only ones who go out there and spread this word. Dave, who helped me push the buttons here, he's a big advocate. And he's part of NCAN. He runs the runs the chapter uh, up in Michigan. Uh, we have two folks from right here who did a great job helping helping you guys get to this event. So it's not just me up here. And I'm going to leave soon, so you'll you'll be able to talk to other people. But uh, it's not just me. We have a lot of people who can help you. That's from the national conference where we got uh, fancy zebra blankets. But those are a lot of our chapter leaders from around the country. So practical advice, just what we've been talking about. Uh, keep networking. I mentioned join an NCAN chapter. I'm happy if you see, if you get to a support group. Uh, you know, we help a lot of support groups. Officially, we help ones that are chapters. Unofficially, we help anybody who asks for a hand. Uh, but get to a, a support group because you get feedback and uh, a perspective from patients and other caregivers who are living the life as well. Uh, reach out to net cancer specialists uh, and uh, find out who they are. Uh, you, you can advocate, but be a team player. Ask questions, but be respectful. But ask questions. And if you're not what you what you uh, getting what you need, well, maybe you do need to look for another doctor. That sounds adversarial, it might be a little bit, but we're trying not to get to that point, but you gotta maintain a, your own choices. And if you think that you need to, then you, you should change. So just uh, pretty much the same thing, but be proactive and ask the questions, speak to the experts, attend support group meetings, attend conferences. All these things will help make you an advocate that will improve the care of the patient that you care about. Went the wrong way. <laughs> okay. So yeah, our attempt to help you, not just with the talking about it, uh, we want you to advocate. We want you to get out to events. So uh, we're going to try and help you make lemonade from lemons. That's, that's what we did. We didn't know we did it until a few years later. And Marianne, if she were here, would say, yeah, it's people don't, wouldn't, understand if I say that this is a blessing that I uh, that I have neuroendocrine cancer but she met so many wonderful people that she feels it's a blessing that, sh that she's able to uh, work in this type of uh, environment yeah. okay so so what we do we, d we have we help people organize walks we do walks we have one on Long Island that's been running for a while we can have on a a uh, sunny day in the end of October, maybe five or six pe hundred people come. So you get the news coverage. You get uh, uh, people f from the park who come over and always talk to you and say, gee, you know, I, I know about this because my, my brother has it, but he didn't know anybody else had it. Those kind of things. We have galas. Some people like to get dressed up and eat and dance and uh, uh, you know, be at those types of events, and those are very exciting as well. And Worldwide Net Cancer Awareness Day, which started, I believe we, we helped uh, create it in 2009, but on November 10th every year, you could get out and uh, have a table in a medical center or 
walk through a mall with your t-shirts or do whatever you think might be uh, a good thing to create more awareness of, of uh, net cancer. Uh, we will help you do that if you visit the website or call us or whatever, but that's something that imagine all, all these people getting out and just taking one day and everybody at the same time talking about net cancer. And the conferences. We've done over 70 now. There he is. I've got a point there. Lowell Anthony. And that was in 2007. So Dr. Lou didn't show up at that time because he was too young. <laughs> he's, he's better now. He has some experience. <laughs> okay. So that's who we are. We're people who... Uh, Maybe we have some experience, we're able to do a little thing like this, but we're just people who are trying to help people. So uh, we hope you join us, we hope you support what we do. Oh, did I mention that you have some advocates? These people are prime examples, okay, but if you're a doctor, if when you were thinking at the beginning of that question of whether you, who your advocates were, if you didn't list your doctor, start thinking about that. That's, that's your biggest advocate. And the takeaway on this is, zebras could wear cool sunglasses. No, it's, it's, uh, it's be part of the solution. That, that's the takeaway on this. So right now, I'm going to bid you adieu and get out of your way. I'd like to introduce Ann Dabbs and Paula Hurt who are our chapter leaders right here in Tennessee, y'all. That doesn't work for me, I'm from New York. <laughs> but uh, if, we can, if we can find them, where are you? Come on up, come on up. Hey Paul, is Paul around? Oh, okay, okay, good. You ready for me to go? Yes, okay, bye. <laughs> No, no, you can, all right. Good morning. I am, I don't know, Bob, I've never done this before. <laughs> Into the mic. Thank you, sir. Is it, can you all hear me? Hey, we're good? Thank you all for being here today. This is exciting. Uh, Paula Hurt and I, Paula, get up here, moral support. Paula Hurt and I met just a little over a year and a half ago. And, uh, we met up with Bob and Mary Ann, and for our own personal reasons, we wanted to become more active in the advocacy efforts of NCAN. We started out in April with about 12 members joining us for lunch at a restaurant. Uh, it quickly escalated to having about 20 people, um, active members in East Tennessee. Our membership role now um, is not just limited to Tennessee. We've slipped a few people in over the border. <laughs> But that's okay. Uh, we, we now have almost 50 uh, net patients and caregivers on our roster in just over 18 months. <laughs> this isn't about Ann and Paula. No. This is about the advocacy awareness that I think all of us will benefit from if we try to find our voice. Can we get our people to raise your hands? Everybody that's a member of the Tennessee chapter, you all are our people and we love you. And I hope, I, 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 I got so excited this morning meeting folks, uh, uh, putting names to faces, uh, people I've never met. If I didn't hug you this morning, I will hug you before the day is over. That's my thing. And uh, I hope we inspire you all to either join our group or to join a uh, support group near you wherever you live. Uh, and you can find those groups listed uh, on the NCAN website. All right, and it's, it's an excellent resource and is so often the case when you give, you actually receive more in return. And I, I think 
we agree that's what has been our experience now interestingly this is my only my third conference uh, uh, within CAN and several of you are probably wondering why I am up here if I've only been doing this for three years. My diagnosis was just three years ago. But within eight weeks of receiving my diagnosis, I had a late night hit on social media and met my first net patient friend about four hours uh, from my home in Washington State. She and her husband graciously uh, offered to meet with me and my husband, and that hour and a half together uh, gave us the empowerment to know that we, we, we can live with this, and it is a we. I may be the patient, but he's in there in the trenches and the summits with me. Um, so I am up here um, very uncomfortably <laughs> because I am paying it forward. Um, and that's what I hope everybody here will, with all of the messages that we hope to impart today, I hope that you will leave with a sense of, I too, even a little bit, can pay it forward. Now, when I first met my net specialist, the very first meeting, he informed me that he would be one of my biggest advocates. And he says, my job is to keep you alive long enough that you will die from something else. <laughs> and you know what? I don't think it's going to be stage fright. I was a little worried about it last <laughs> night. <laughs> But, but, but I'm, I'm doing okay, I think. But anyway, I think that's a great attitude. And even on my rough days, because we all have rough days, you, you just got to keep plugging on, so do that. Uh, I've got one little um, uh, more personal announcement that I would like to make before I get to my assigned job for this morning. We will not be interrupting to announce any local football scores of interest, <laughs> except for except Dr. Anthony, Roan County High beat the socks off of Cleveland last night. Awesome yellow jackets. Inside joke, I'm sorry. All right. I am delighted. Was, I was delighted to be able uh, to, to be asked to introduce our first speaker. Yeah. You don't, you I don't want? usually get to talk. If no, to talk. I thought you were later. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. No. You, yeah, all right, all right. I, I thought I was later too. I was out <laughs> in the hall registering people. I'm going to say this. Isn't it a great day to be in Nashville, Tennessee? Yes. <laughs> And it's so good to look out here and see so many zebras, so many of their loved ones, their friends, their caregivers. We're blessed by, by you people. We truly are the people that watch out for us. They have our back. And we just appreciate it so much. And I'm not going to cry, but I am. <laughs> so, uh, Anne gave you a, a good outlay of how our meetings have grown. And I would like everyone in here that's in Tennessee or just across the border to please look online and consider joining the Tennessee chapter. Um, we have a good group. We do a, a lot of um, information when we first start our meetings. We kind of go around, have a round robbing. And then after um, we do that, we'll kind of catch up on what's new going on in the medical field or a new test, a new medicine, whatever. And then we just let the patients take over. You know, what does the zebra need? How is the zebra feeling? How's the caregiver feeling? And I think we have very productive meetings, and I would like everyone in here, no matter where you live, to get involved in some kind of support meeting. And you will see me later today. Thank you. 